Hello everyone, welcome back to this tutorial on Elasticsearch. In this tutorial, we are going to learn the various concepts used in the Elasticsearch and at the end, we will also have the analogy with the relational database. These terms are used quite often in daily usage for Elasticsearch. So let's understand these terms one by one. The very first concept is a cluster. Cluster is a collection of the nodes. Cluster has a unique name. If you do not provide any name to the cluster, then it uses the default name as an elastic search. We can create cluster specific to each environment. For example, if we have the development environment, then we can create a development cluster. If you have quality analysis environment that is QA environment then we can create QA cluster and so on. We can create cluster with more than one nodes. However, it is totally okay if you have just one node in a cluster. This is helpful in lower environments such as development or test environment where we have the limited number of sources or the resources in that case, we can click create only one node and we can assign that node to the cluster. Cluster provides indexing and searchable capabilities across all the nodes. What does it mean? It means when we perform search or index a data, we do not have to worry about on which node the data will be going to index or on which node the data is going to be searched. It will be handled by the cluster itself with the help of nodes. Which leads us to understanding the concept of node. The node is a single server which is a part of the cluster and this node stores the data. So if someone asks you where the actual data gets stored in the elastic search in that case, the answer is node. Node has a unique name as like the cluster name. Node provides important capabilities such as searching and indexing, which is of course the part of the cluster. Here, important thing to remember is the node names are all in lowercase. We can create as many nodes as we want. There is no limitations. If cluster has more than one node, then each node contains subset of data. So we don't store complete data on single node. We'll understand why we need to do that in upcoming concepts. So what is an index? As we know, the nodes contain the indices and an Index is a collection of similar type of document. For example, a document can be a customer information or the document can be product information. In this case, we can create index for each type of document. If you refer our example, if the customer is our type of document, then we can create a customer index. If a product is a type of document then we can create product index. The name of index is also in lower case. Index name is used in several operations such as indexing, searching, updating or deleting document within that index. There is no limitation on number of index indexes we can create within a cluster. We can create n number of indexes in a cluster. So what is type or category? Just now we saw the type of document, right? So this type is nothing but a category. So the category and the type, these terms are used interchangeably. Inside each index, we have a type and it is nothing but in other term, a category. 
we can create multiple categories such as customer, product, vendor, supplier, or broker. There is no limit. We can create any type of category. Assume that our index name is a customer. Then within that customer index, we can create categories such as individual customer, organization customer, or sell proprietor, etc. Under each category, we can have a document. The type has a name and it also has the associated mapping. We create a separate mapping for each type of index. For example, if you have the customer as an index, then we will have its a corresponding mapping. If you are creating product as an index, then we will have the mapping corresponding to the product. Here, some additional note about the category or type. As we know, the Elasticsearch is built on the Lucene. And in Lucene, there is no concept of a type or category. Then how it is used in Elasticsearch, right? So the category is stored as an underscore type, which is stored in the metadata. And while we perform the searching on given document, then Elasticsearch applies filter based on this underscore type field. And that way it uses to identify against what type of document we are going to search. Okay, so let's understand the next term and that is nothing but a mapping. The mapping describes the what are the fields which are used in the document and what are their types. The types can be like string, integer, date or geo fields. It also contains the details about how each field will be indexed and stored on each node. In many cases, we don't have to create mapping explicitly and it is called as a dynamic mapping. Elasticsearch creates the dynamic mapping based on the document which we store. So when we execute like post or put request, which we'll see shortly. So when we execute those command, the mappings get automatically generated and it is nothing but the dynamic mapping. Let's understand the other term that is nothing but the document. We refer this document term quite a few times during our this discussion. So what is this document? The document is a, a base unit of the information in the Elasticsearch. So it's a very important thing with respect to Elasticsearch. Document contains fields with the key value pairs. The value can be of any type like string, date, integer, which we just discussed. And these type of fields are also mentioned in the mapping. It could be a single customer or a product or a vendor. So when we create any a customer, it is stored as a document in the Elasticsearch. The document is normally in the JSON format and it is physically resides in the given index, which we create. We can create as many document as we want. And this is normally based on the how much data you're storing in your system. Based on that, we create those number of indexes. Suppose we had 1 million records in our system, then we create 1 million documents under the given index. So let's understand the other terms like shards and replicas. Assume that we have 500 millions of customers and we'd like, we would like to implement search functionality based on this data set. How can we scale it? If you store all the documents on a single node, it may lead to performance issue. Also, what will happen if node on which these indices are stored goes down. So to achieve the scalability, 
we need to distribute all these indices on multiple nodes and hence shards and replicas comes into the picture. The shard is nothing but a portion of the index. We can divide the index into multiple pieces and the each piece is nothing but the shard. Shards will be helpful if we have the large data set to store on physical disk. For example, if you have the one tera terabyte of data to store on given node, but the physical limitation or the physical disk has just 500 gigabyte, then we can divide the given data set into two parts, 500 of each and we can have the multiple shards for the given index. If the physical disk do not have sufficient capacity, then we can divide the index into multiple pieces. Each shard is fully functional index in its own. By default, while creating an, an index, we create fine number of shards. However, we can configure as many shards as we want. In short, shards are created to achieve scalability. Then how about high availability? If one node goes down, how can we achieve the high availability? And for that, we use the replica, which is a segment of index or copy of shard. We never locate replica on same node where the primary shard is present. So that when one node goes down, the other node will be used to recover the index. By default, while creating an index, we create only one replica. Let's assume we have two nodes. In that case, we will have the five replica shards and we will have five primary shards across two nodes. So that means for each primary shard, there will be corresponding replica. So replicas are helpful to achieve the high availability. Important thing to note about the replica is search queries can be executed on these replicas in parallel. So in summary, the shards are used for achieving the scalability and replicas are used for achieving the high availability. Addition to all these terms, there is another term which is quite often used in the Elasticsearch and that is nothing but the near real-time search engine. Elasticsearch is a near real-time search engine and it is because there is a small latency from a document is indexed and until it is searched. And this latency is because of it's a distributed nature. Normally it is less than a second delay. So that should be okay in your actual implementation. Now let's understand the analogy with this elastic search based on the relational database. If you have the relational database experience, then this analogy will definitely going to helpful to understand and remember the elastic search concepts. In the relational database, we have the database cluster. Within the database cluster, we can have the multiple database servers. And on each database server, we create the database instance. We create one or more database schemas in a given database instance. If you recall, in each database schema, we can create tables. And within the tables, we can have the columns. And we store the data in the table in the form of rows. Now having this basic understanding of the relational database, how we can correlate the elastic search with the relational database. The elastic search has a cluster which is equivalent to the database cluster. Elastic search has nodes which is equivalent to the database server. The index in the elastic search is correspond to the database instance. The type within the index is equivalent to the database schema where we store the data. And the mapping in the Elasticsearch is equivalent to the table in the relational database. And the document itself is nothing but the 
row in the table. The fields in the document are corresponding to the columns in the table. So this is the analogy between the Elasticsearch and the relational database. So in summary, we will have a cluster. Inside cluster, there will be multiple nodes. Inside of a node, we will have the index, which is the primary index. And inside the index, we will have the type of indices, such as customer, product, etc. And each type of index will have the documents which holds the actual data. On parallel side, we will have the shards to partition the index and each shard will have the same type of index and the documents to hold the data. And of course, we will have the replicas for backup purpose. So these are the terms normally used while implementing the Elasticsearch.